Welcome back, I'm Ren from Blue Wood Gaming, and today I am finally giving my thoughts on Hunt Showdown. I started playing this game like over a month ago, and when I started playing it, I knew that I really had to play it for a long time to like get down to the uh, base of it and actually give a good representation of this game. And so I ended up going all the way to max level, uh, which is level 100. I have not prestiged yet, but you can prestige an infinite number of times but I did make it to level 100, and this is my thoughts on it for getting to level 100, and whether or not I think that it's worth it to buy it in this current time as of the uh, release of this video. Now, before we get into anything, let's talk about uh, what Hunt Showdown actually is. I've heard a lot of people call this game a survival horror PvP experience with a heavy emphasis on the PvE. And that's kind of correct, but not really, and I'll explain what I mean by that. And to explain it, I'll kind of break it down on what each part of that kind of means in relation to the game. So let's start out with the first word, survival. The closest that this game comes to survival is you have a limited amount of ammo and resources going in. You don't get infinite heals, you have just a very low number of heals. Uh, usually I bring in one first aid kit which will let me heal three chunks of my health bar, which I normally have three large chunks. Then I also bring in two stems that will each heal me for 50 points of health. And then other things such as traps or grenades or whatnot, you have a very low number of those, and you have to split them between using them on the PvE monsters and the other players if you happen to run across them. Now let's move on to talking about the next word, which is horror. And um, this one is... Um, kind of a bit of a different one to talk about because personally i wouldn't consider this horror it's not like there's jump scares and whatnot throughout this game it's really just uh the dark and gritty atmosphere and places that you have to go through it looks like it's in the deep south of the america uh there's sections that look like they're in the bayou there's um some like rundown farms and stuff you can definitely tell that this is like late 1800s early 1900s is the time period um, they throw in quite a bit of the supernatural, like there's zombies. Once you defeat the bosses, you have to banish them. Just different stuff like that, but I wouldn't really consider it horror. Like, horror that you'll get into it is knowing that there's another player around the corner and trying to figure out, like, where exactly they are, but not really knowing. And it's really a, a lot more tension building than it is just straight up horror. And now let's cover the final section where they call the game PvP focused, but with a huge emphasis on the PvE. And I would actually throw that the other way around. This game is mostly focused on the PvE. You're going to be going from location to location, having to fight monsters between the way. The boss is just a boss. Um, it's mostly PvE, and then you also have to worry about the players around in the world. So I would really consider this pve first and then the pvp just kind of adds on top of it so now that i've gone over that i'll go through what you'll essentially end up doing in each match that you play and the first thing that you do is set up your character uh, you have to start out with just a character that has a basic loadout and you can change everything that he's carrying. That can be uh, the weapons being primary and secondary weapons, then you have tools, and then you have consumables. Tools are usually like your traps and your knife and stuff that you're going to be using longer in the match and then your consumables are your one-time use things that you really have to know when you want to use it and when you don't because well it's one-time use to give an example of a high-end loadout i'll just give you the loadout that you're seeing in this video my character's primary weapon is the Mosinagant Avtamon, which is the only automatic gun in this game uh, as of right now uh, as a secondary, he's using a Cardwell Conversion Uppercut, which is the strongest pistol in the game currently. It's a single action pistol and deals about 70 damage, and people normally have 100 health. Then he's carrying four different types of tools. He's carrying a regular knife, which I recommend you have on every single character. He's carrying the first aid kit that will heal one chunk of my character's health or of my friend's health. Then he's using decoys 
which you can throw to kind of decoy different things and set off uh, different traps and whatnot. Then he's using throwing knives as his final tool, which can kill things silently from a distance. Then for his consumables, he's using two syringes that will refuel his health or my friend's health to maximum. And then one large dynamite bundle, which is just kind of the largest grenade that you can get in the game. Then once you have your character all selected, their loadout and everything, then you want to choose a contract. And this essentially just means which boss do you want to go after. As of right now, there's currently two bosses in the game, being the Butcher and the Spider. Now, when you choose a contract, currently it's going to show you which bosses are on the map. It could be one, it could be the other one, or it could be both of them. And it will kind of show you which areas of the map you will find the boss on. And once you've chosen a contract, then you can load into a map and it will be you and nine other people. Of these nine other people, one of them could be your buddy that you bring along. It could be a random that you pick up to bring with you on the journey. And then of the eight other people, those will all be people that you're trying to look out for. Now of these eight other people, they could be uh, just a solo player by themselves or it could be a duo group and they mix the solo players and the duo players together so every time that you come across somebody you really have to assume that they have a buddy somewhere once you've loaded in you're able to choose where you're going to spawn each team so there's five teams in total are given two random spawn points on the map to spawn from now most of the time both players on a team are going to spawn in the same place but you don't have to. Each player could pick one of the spawn points. And here's one of the first tension building spots is that there are 20 very distinct spawn points on this map that they have in the game since there's currently only one. And so you kind of have to look around and guess where the different teams are spawning in and you kind of have to prepare yourself right off the bat and go look at some of the other spawn points around where you spawn to kind of uh, like see if anybody's around you. Once you've done that and taken care of anybody that happened to spawn near you, then you can start going towards the actual PvE portion of the game. You'll start by going to one of the 15 named locations on the map and look for a clue as to where the boss is going to be. You use a special ability called Dark Sight to find this clue, and if the boss doesn't happen to be at the area that you go to, one third of the available map will be blacked out showing you that the boss is not in that location. You then work your way towards the two other clues in the available sections. You cannot pick up a clue in a blacked out area of the map. You have to constantly keep going to the area that's still open. And once you have the third clue, you will be given the location of the boss. Now, say you find the boss in one of the areas before you pick up your third clue. Uh, you will be instantly given the location of the boss and you will no longer be able to pick up any other clues for said boss. And if you happen to be in a contract that has two different bosses on the same map, then this only applies to about half of the map. So in total, you can pick up six clues from a single match if there happens to be two bosses on the map. Once you have the location of the boss, then you go proceed to fight it. Currently, there's two bosses in the game, like I said, the Butcher and the Spider. And to give a quick rundown of those two, uh, the Butcher is a big, slow target uh, that has a melee attack. And then once you deal enough damage to him, he'll go into an enraged state where he will have a fire throwing ability but overall this is the easier of the two bosses the other one is the spider this is the one that new players tend to go to first but this really shouldn't be the case the spider is very very fast and its main attack is spitting poison at you which is very hard to deal with if you are somewhat of a newer player once you've defeated one of the two bosses, this is when the real tension of the game starts to build, and when most of the PvP tends to happen. And that's because you can't just quietly kill the boss and escape out of one of the three exits on the map. No, when you kill the boss, you have to stay around 
and banish its soul back to hell before you can pick up a trophy to take back and actually complete the bounty. The banishing process alone takes nearly two minutes to complete, and from the moment you start banishing, every other player on the map is notified that you're starting the banishing and is given the exact location of where the boss is. So once you start banishing the boss, you really have to hunker down and protect the bounty from any other players that may want to come and take it from you. Thankfully, if you're in a match where there's two bosses on the map, there's a chance that some of the players are only going for one boss or the other, and so you might have to deal with less players that way. Now, once the boss is fully banished and you pick up its bounty, you are given a new ability. When using your dark sight, you can now look around and see where other players are within 150 meters of you. You have 10 seconds of this ability that can be spread out among the time that you use your dark sight, so you don't have to use it all at once. And once you've picked up the bounty, you have to work your way to one of the three exits on the map, and after a 20 second exit countdown, you're finally out of the map and you're able to collect your winnings. Now that's a lot to do in a single match, and you're given a one hour time limit to do it, and sometimes I've taken almost that entire amount of time. There's been times when it's been less than a minute and I just finally make it to an exit. Then there's been other times where I get into the first place, find the boss immediately, kill it and leave, and those usually take about 15 minutes or so. So this game actually requires a significant amount of time to go through just a single match. And it's that large time investment that's really going to put most people off of playing this game. Because it's not like you're running through everything in that amount of time either. What you're really trying to do is hide and not make as much noise as possible. So, like, when you start out, you're trying to quietly get over to those other spawn points to see if there's anybody else. When you're moving from location to location, you have to be cautious because everything makes sound. Attacking an enemy makes sound, them attacking you makes sound, uh, them dying makes sound, uh, just moving through an area, if you're moving through water that's making sound of you splashing around when you're walking, um, if you're walking through the woods you have to worry about not stepping on any branches and making a cracking sound, you have to be careful about when you're shooting your gun because that makes a really loud sound and thankfully they're adding in more things that allow you to be quieter, but the problem is that allows everybody to be quieter. So that just builds the tension on where everybody else is going to be. And that slow, methodical, deliberate movement and just pacing that you have to put yourself through to make as little sound as possible, uh, that's really what's going to turn a lot of people off. Because when you get to high level play, which uh, is like level 71 and up, I believe, is considered tier 3. Uh, when you get up there, everybody is like super quiet. They are mostly on the ball. And really, you just have to be prepared for that. Because if you don't want a game where you have to slowly walk through a bunch of woods for 30 minutes, then this might not be for you. And uh, I know that actual hunters will kind of realize why you would want to do this and why you would want to make as little sound as possible, but someone that's just out there wanting to play a game to have fun, you might not really consider this to be the most fun that you could be having. Now, normally this is the point in the video where I would go to my pros and cons about the game, just the stuff that I liked and the stuff that I didn't like, but... In this case, it's just a bunch of stuff that I like, and the stuff that I don't like is getting addressed relatively soon, uh, as you can see by the roadmap on the Hunt Showdown website. Um, the only stuff that I can really criticize them for is, like, the lack of enemy variety, which is getting fixed within the next three months. Uh, adding more guns, maybe the addition of female characters, um, adding a new map. 
uh, new bosses, but all of that stuff is being addressed and directly addressed, and we're giving an actual, like, time for when this stuff will come out. And so, really, I don't have any problems with this game, and I just love playing it. So let's get on to whether or not it is worth it to buy. And like I said, this is an overwhelming yes, but with a few caveats. This game is definitely worth it to buy without a shadow of a doubt if you have somebody to play with. Like someone that you know their playstyle, or you're willing to learn their playstyle, and willing to work off each other. Uh, that's currently the way that I play, and I absolutely love playing this game with that person. Uh, if you're playing it just as a solo player, it's fine, I've done it. Uh, you're not going to do as well as if you were talking to the person that you were playing with, but it's not going to completely ruin your enjoyment of the game, and maybe through playing, you might find that person that you like playing with and will probably connect with them. But bypassing all of that, you need to know what you're getting into when you play this game. There will be times where you sit in a bush for 10 minutes just waiting for somebody near you to make a sound. There will be times where you get into a heated gunfight. There will be times where you're sneaking through a field hoping not to be heard because you know that there are other people around. There will be times where you're chasing down a person and you just won't be able to get there in time. Uh, there will be times where you're sniped from nowhere and you just get instantly killed. Like, this is actually what you're going to be going through. And if you aren't willing or you don't want to, um, like, sneak through the map for 30 minutes to finally fight a boss and then end up getting killed either by the boss or other people coming to steal the boss kill from you, then this game might not be for you. But if you like what you've been seeing, and you like what I'm saying about the game, then um, there's really no other place that you can get an experience like this. From all of my time playing games, I don't know of a single other game that gives the same experience as Hunt Showdown. So for those people, yes, overwhelmingly get this game right now. And even if you look at the current player counts for the game, which currently there was a 24 hour peak of 3,200 people playing it, which doesn't seem like that much for a game in early access where it wants you to have people to play against, but because the lobbies are only 10 people, that's a lot of lobbies to fill up. And so it doesn't matter that the player counts got kind of low, um, it's still plenty of people to play with. Like I've played when there was roughly a thousand people altogether playing the game. I played when there's been less than a thousand people playing and I've had no difficulty finding a lobby and continuing to play. And I've just been having a blast for the uh, about 60 to 70 hours that I've been playing this game and getting to level 100. And I continue to play it much more. So that is it for this. Look out for a full review when this game finally comes out of early access because I guarantee that I will be doing one. And that's it for this. As always, I'm Ryan from Blue Gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one.